And it was only fitting that we all honoured a volunteer tonight because I want to speak about how the cross has to change the way in which we serve. This month across the nights in April, we're, we're looking, we're kind of reflecting from the cross. Leading up to Easter, we reflected to the cross and now we're reflecting from the cross and with the, with the premise that the cross must change some things in our life. It's hard to look at the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus and be transformed by His grace and by His love and stay the same. It must change the way we live, the way we act, the way we speak, the way we think. And I thought Alan's brought an incredible message last week and uh, Alan's was blown away by that and was thinking about that all week. Who's thankful for Alan's, Sancho? And as I was preparing for tonight, I really felt on my heart to talk around how the cross must change the way in which we, we serve. And we serve. We serve a Saviour who served, who broke cultural norms and barriers in order to serve people and to love people and to place value upon people. And, you know, I remember in the July school holidays, I know we're about to, well, we are in school holidays and the youth ministry said, amen. amen. And the parents said, <laughs> Uh, and uh, I was with our youth ministry on Friday night, Fuel Festival and the Wild West with wildlife. And Tyler, if Lexi calls, you have full permission to leave. These guys are expecting a baby any, any day now, any minute, any hour. So you've got full permission. If Tyler runs out, let's all say a prayer. But you know, I remember in the July school holidays, one of the things I look forward to the most was for, 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 for years and years and years, since as young as I can remember, my parents would pack our car, an old school Holden Commodore that every now and then used to backfire. And I, I remember that vividly. It was loud, it was like deafening. And we would drive up the Hume Highway from Melbourne and we would come to Sydney and we would stay around the Homebush area or the Hills area to go to a local church conference called Hillsong. And I remember coming out on a bus, not knowing anyone, and coming to a youth conference where I would hear the Word of God, where people would preach the Word. And I remember sitting above that footy tunnel right there and feeling like one day God really spoke to me and asked me if I would be willing to give my life to the ministry. And I remember sitting in that area right above that section and not really knowing anyone, being in year seven or eight, feeling a little bit uncomfortable but responding. And I don't know about you, but there's, there's few God encounters that I vividly remember. I remember where I was. You have a picture of what happened, maybe a word that God spoke. I mean, I think a lot of us in this room would remember a few, a handful of God encounters that we had that radically changed things from then on. And I remember sitting up there and I prayed a simple but dangerous prayer. Something like, God, I'll go anywhere you want me to go. Sometimes the simple prayers are the most dangerous prayers. Chanel and I were talking about this the other day. When you pray a prayer like, God, I'll do anything. And God's like, anything? I'll go anywhere, God. And he's like, anywhere? I just want to live for you. I just want to bless you. I just want to give my whole life to you. Or songs like, God, would you break my heart for what breaks yours? Really? Really? Because here's the thing I've found is serving God is the best adventure you could ever go on, but it also requires laying down things in your life that you won't want to. It requires laying down desires and thoughts and ways of living that you would want to go this way, but God's saying, no, I need you to go this way. And I pray that when we look to the cross and we would be reminded of a Saviour who served and who 
was beaten and was mocked and went through pain in order that we may have life and freedom and forgiveness. And what blows my mind is that at the last meal that Jesus had with his disciples, he makes a statement of servanthood. The last meal that he has with the people that he had done life with, it was during that meal that the unthinkable happened when Jesus got up and began washing their feet. Now, washing someone's feet in that time was not culturally uh, kind of unusual. But what was unusual was that a man of his status doing that, a teacher, a rabbi, a king, getting down in the dirt and the mess. And I wanna encourage some people here tonight, I love that our God is not afraid of your mess. He's not afraid of the things that are going on in your life. He's not afraid of the things that you're hiding. He's not afraid of the things that you struggle to talk about. God is a God that wants to get involved and help you and mend some of those things and set you free tonight. But I love that God came in man form and in this moment served His disciples. In His position, it was unexpected. But Jesus knew in order to live and to lead well, you need to serve well. And I believe that this is a thing that society has not unlocked yet. In order to live and to lead well, you need to serve well. In order to live and to lead well, there will be times where you need to break some norms in order to show some love to people. In order to live and to lead well, there's gonna be times where you need to give up your own desires in order to show Jesus to someone. And I love that even in Mark 10, 45, when the disciples are getting, uh, I guess, so caught up in who's the most important and who's done what and who's going to sit next to Jesus. Jesus reminds them of what it's all about. It's about serving people. In Mark 10, 45, for even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give His life as a ransom for many. And so I've just got three points tonight when it comes to serving. And I pray tonight more than just a message that this would be written down or anything like that, I pray you would catch it tonight. I pray that God would do something in your spirit tonight. I pray that the Holy Spirit would remind you of some dreams tonight. I pray that something on the inside of you would start to burn up again tonight. I pray for people that are feeling tired would get refreshed tonight. Because here's the first thing about serving. Serving has never been about the position of your feet. It's always been about the posture of your heart. Serving has never been restricted to a physical location. It's a posture. It's a heart to say, God, I want to serve you. In fact, uh, about 11 years ago, I moved to Sydney to start Hillsong College. And uh, the best decision I made in my life, the funny thing is, guess what car I drove up? A Holden Commodore, baby. Yeah, keeping it in the family line. Drove it up here, packed all my stuff in my car. Didn't have much stuff, obviously, because it all fit in my car. And I remember starting Bible college. And I remember when I got my my practicum where I'm going to serve, and they said, "Uh, you're out at Greater West Campus. And I said, you must have got something wrong. True story. I said, I came up here to serve at the Hills Campus. And then they said to me, well, the need is at the Greater West Campus. And I pushed back. I remember meeting with the pastor at the time, the youth pastor, and at the first meeting, I said to him, hey, I love Greater West, even though I've never been there. But I said, it's just not for me. And he said, well, to be honest, I get that, but there's a huge need out there. And God convicted me. It's not about the position of your feet. It's about the posture of your heart. And so I felt convicted and for two years I drove out there, my Holden Commodore, chewed up a bit of fuel it did, pick people up, go to bump in, bump out. And you know, it was the best, greatest two years of my life, taught me a lot. And I look back now and I laugh at how God works because there was things I learned at Greater West that I never could have learned anywhere else. I got to be a part of the bump in and out team 
which in Melbourne later, years later, I had to lead the bump in and out team and I would laugh at God at how He was preparing me for what was to come. The pastor I got to serve under was Pastor Jay Jury. He's now my boss, my oversight. And I laugh at God that, hey, I got to build a relationship 11 years ago without knowing that I would get to serve Jay now and, and have a relationship with Jay. But here's the thing, friend, that it's never about the position of your feet. It's about the posture of your heart. And God had to teach me some things at Greater West that I never would have learned in Melbourne or at Hills. And I just wonder for you, it's funny when you focus on position, you will always get frustrated. But when your heart is healthy, you will be fruitful. I think about Joseph in the Old Testament. Joseph went through some, some pretty hectic situations, if you know your Bible. Had a dream, had a God dream, probably out of immaturity, shared that dream too early to the wrong people, to the wrong crowd. But I love that as you read through Genesis, what had happened to Joseph didn't affect his servant heart. Because Joseph flourished in every position he got put in. Because it was never about the position of his feet. It was about the posture of his heart. Joseph flourished in, in, in Potiphar's house. Joseph flourished in jail. Joseph flourished in every place he was put. Why? Because I believe he had it unlocked that it wasn't about the physical location. It was about bringing his best, serving the Lord. I love this scripture in Genesis 39. The Lord was with Joseph. So he succeeded in everything he did as he served in the home of his Egyptian master. Potiphar noticed this and realised that the Lord was with Joseph, giving him success in everything he did. He served others. He gave his best. He dug deep. He had every reason to get angry, have a hard heart, draw back, focus on himself. But I love that scripture that the Lord was with Joseph. So he succeeded in everything he did as he served. See, the danger is, friend, when life gets busy, when life gets tough, when things get thrown your way, it's easy to want to draw back and forget to serve. But friend, what I've found is serving is not seasonal. It's a stance. It's a spirit. It's a way of living. And I just want to be clear from the outset, I'm not just talking about serving in church on a Sunday. As a pastor, do that. That's a big part of it. I believe in that. I believe that'll add value to your life. But I'm talking about a spirit and a heart about your life. Are you known as someone who serves people, who gives your best, who shows up? I pray in the Hills District, people might not know us for a whole lot of things we think they know us about. But imagine if what we were known for is, I don't really know those people on Norwest Boulevard, the big Hillsong, but... Gee, they serve well. Gee, they serve their schools well. Gee, they serve their communities well. Gee, they just show up when it matters. John Wesley once wrote, do all the good you can by all the means you can, in all the ways you can, in all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can, as long as ever you can. Serving God has never been about the position of your feet, but it's about the posture of our heart. See, that's number one. Number two is serving God isn't just for a select few. Never fall into the trap. That's not for me. God uses the available. I don't know what calendar you use. Are there people here and you love a good Apple calendar? Like, you know, that's your thing. I know Terry Scott loves teams. Yeah, shout out to any teams people in the house tonight. Yeah, any old school, just old school calendar book, carry it round. I see that hand. Yeah. Google Calendar. Oh, yes. How could I forget Google Calendar? I don't know what calendar you use for your work, for life. I know some people are better at using it than others. I'm feeling convicted right now. But what I wonder is when God requests a meeting with you, when God taps you on the shoulder, when God gives you that little prompting, how available are you? 
See, God doesn't use perfect people. He uses available people. He uses willing people. And I just pray, friend, that you don't limit what God wants to do in you and through you. Sometimes we're our own worst enemy, that God wants us to dream and to believe and to believe for more and stretch for more and go for more. But we limit ourselves. See, a limiter when it comes to maybe an electronical device is a circuit whose output is restricted to a certain range. In other words, a limiter limits the amount of power that can go through something or even sometimes the amount of water or current or sound, it limits it. Why? Because it doesn't want to override it. But sometimes I think we put the limiter way too small. We put a limiter on our lives and God wants to blow it open and do way more than we can think, ask or imagine, but we limit ourselves. Your past limits you. God doesn't say that in His Word. Your thinking limits you. Maybe your comparison limits you. Maybe there's questions that limit you like, I haven't been a Christian long enough or I don't know enough or I don't speak how other people speak, but friend, I believe it's a word for someone here tonight. Tonight you need to stop limiting yourself. Don't limit the gifting that God has put on your life. Don't limit the things that God wants to do in and through you. I love the Apostle Paul because he's writing to the church in Corinth and he reminds them that, hey, it's not our strengths that we boast about. It's actually our weaknesses. Because in the area that we are weak, it's an opportunity for God to shine through and to move. And he says this, each time he said, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. So now I am glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. We serve a God that doesn't use the perfect, He uses the available. And friend, tonight, don't limit what God wants to do in and through your life this year, this decade, this season. And sometimes you've got to get real with God and ask Him, am I limiting myself? Are there things that I'm saying that don't align with your word, God? Are there things I think that doesn't really think like the mind of Christ? Are there things that I believe that I actually have to break and stop believing? Because no one else is limiting me but me. Serving God isn't just for a select few and God uses the available and the third point is the team would join me and we're gonna worship for a moment and just a bit. Hey, number one is serving God isn't about the position of your feet, it's about the posture of your heart. Number two, serving God isn't just for a select few. God uses the available. And number three, serving God isn't a replacement for being with God. Serving God isn't a replacement for being with God. And here's the revelation that I pray you would catch tonight is that God wants a relationship with you. He doesn't need you for what you can do for Him. And sometimes we think God needs me for what I can bring. But we've got to remember, He's the God that created the heavens and the earth, the Alpha and the Omega. He spoke and things came to life. And He wants to partner with me, with you. I think we get it mixed up when we try and strive and think, God, I have to or I need to do this out of my own strength. But God's saying, no, I don't need you to do anything for me. I want you. I want a relationship with you. I want your heart. I want every part of your being. See, it's a very different way of thinking. See, serving God isn't a replacement for being with Him. And I think we've all fallen into the trap of when it goes the other way around. And I feel like this has been a long-lasting, I guess, thing that has really happened. And there's stories in the Bible where you see the tension at work about being and doing. But I was at Summerfest earlier this year 
And this image really spoke to me as we were worshiping. And I've got faith to believe that our young adults ministry, something significant is gonna happen this year. And starting from Summerfest, I just believe God just blew something open over our young adults. And I really believe there's young adults in here who are hungry and passionate about the things of God. I got young adults in my ear about wanting to be faith mission partners. I got young adults in my ear asking, come on, when are we gonna do more in our communities? And I love the passion in our young adult community. And I believe that incredible things are gonna take place. And I was at Summerfest this year and this picture, this image just blew me away when we were in worship. And I saw a young man, Kwaku, sits on the second row, serves faithfully. We did some years in Melbourne together. Great man of God does great things in the marketplace, but every single Sunday you'll see him here serving faithfully, jumps on doors, does camera, does whatever it takes to build church, to love people, to make people feel at home. And there was this time where I was in worship and I may have looked around for a moment. You've all done it, come on. And uh, I saw Kwaku and this really stuck to me because he was taking photos for that session but he found himself putting his camera down to the side and he just found himself in a corner on his knees just worshipping God. I think I've got a photo. I took a little sneaky iPhone photo and uh, you can see his camera just next to his leg. And I felt like the Holy Spirit speak to me and convict me and say, hey, never let the doing replace the being because the being's where you'll find fuel for the doing. The being is where you'll get reminded of what to do. The being is where you'll find the grace in order to do the work God wants you to do. The being is where your heart will get refreshed and restored in order for you to do more and accomplish more. And sometimes we get these mixed up the wrong way or our mindset on the wrong things and we're so focused on doing that we miss the being. And Kwaku, I got faith to believe that God's just gonna do something fresh in your life and open doors of opportunity. And I see your heart and I see your consistency and I just think there's great things in store for you. I believe you're a leader. I believe you're called by God. I believe you're set apart. I believe He's gonna do incredible things in you and through you. And I just love your heart and spirit like many others that sometimes the time requires us to put whatever's in our hand down and just spend time with the one who it's all for. We don't serve to be seen. We don't serve to do God a favour. We don't serve because it suits our preferences. We don't serve because it's convenient or comfortable. We serve because the God who made the heavens and the earth, who sent His one and only Son, who bridged a gap we could never bridge, who saved us from all of our sin and our shame and our guilt, who forgave us and set us free and gives us hope and gives us a brand new start and a future, wants to partner with us. And He says, I don't want you for just what you can do for me. I want you for you. And I don't know about you, but that changes the way you serve. Because serving is not a have to. Serving is not a tick box. Serving is not just a chore or a roster. We're serving the God that gives life. And I love the scripture as we conclude, serve the Lord with gladness. And I just felt on my heart that this is a scripture for our church this year. And in this next season that God wants to restore some joy and gladness in our serving. That serving has never been a have to. Serving has never been just as a thing that I guess I will. But no, we serve the Lord with gladness. And we do it with a smile on our face. And we do it because we love to. And we do it because we're honouring God. And we do it with passion. And we don't just do it here in one to five solemn circuit, but we do it wherever we live and we do it in the community we live in and we 
May even do it in small ways, major ways. Do it in creative ways. Do it in ways we haven't thought about before. Maybe we just start small where I used to mow, you know, just my lawn to the edge. And maybe I go, you know what, I'll just go the, the nature strip for the sake of my neighbour. I don't know what God might prompt you to do. It might be small, but it's about having a servant heart, a servant stance to say, God, I want to serve with gladness. I want to give you my best. I want to give you my all. I don't want to live a life that just blesses me, but I, God, I want to seek to bless others. God, what you did on the cross is too good for me just to receive. But God, there's something in me that desires to bless people. God, there's something in me that is desired and made, God, to help people. God, there's something in me and the way I'm made is, is a way to encourage people and uplift people and give to people and bless people. And I don't know about you, but what I do know is that I want to serve the Lord with gladness and come into His presence singing. So what we're going to do is just take a moment for us just to be. And I even pray for some of our hosts right now, some of our volunteers, if you can, to just stop and just be. Just get refreshed. Like Lucinda spoke, just go to the well. Just go to the source. I believe God is gonna refresh people, remind people, encourage people, pour out His Spirit over people. So come on team, why don't you lead us? And why not just for a moment you be? That might be getting on your knees, raising your hands, closing your eyes, staying seated. I don't know what works for you, but what I do know is don't miss this moment to have an encounter with the living God.